Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is on a really interesting new gun that is on the market from Smith & Wesson. This is the M&P 5.7, and it definitely looks like the M&P line that many of us know and love, or are at least familiar with, but it is chambered in 5.7 by 28 millimeter. A really interesting cartridge that was designed, I believe in the early 1990s, as a possible replacement in NATO for the nine millimeter. They were looking for something that would have better penetration against body armor. And essentially it's a very small looking rifle cartridge. So it's like taking 5.56 and scaling it down. And because of the pressures and the dimensions of the cartridge, any gun that is chambered in this cartridge has to have a little bit different operating mechanism than like your standard 9mm or 45. And many people are familiar with guns like the FN 5.7 and their submachine gun, the P90. And those were kind of the only guns that have ever been offered in this caliber up until until just a couple of years ago when Ruger came out with the Ruger 5.7 and I believe now Smith & Wesson is trying to capture some of that market with this particular pistol. And of course what I think they're trying to do here is to capitalize on the popularity of the cartridge or maybe the future of the cartridge as well as addressing some of the issues people have with those other guns that are chambered in 5.7. So we're going to talk about the things that I like and don't like. But before I do, as always, I want to thank the people that make these videos possible. First and foremost is the owner of this awesome pistol. You guys have heard about me talk about him before and his name is Jack. Jack, thank you so much as always for a owning the gun and the ammunition for this range report. As always, I want to thank my Patreon supporters because through their monthly donations and support, they really do help me so much in keeping this content going. And if you guys want to see all these videos early, please go check out my Patreon page and you can join for as little as $1 a month. And as always, I want to thank my primary sponsor for all these range reports because he does so much for my channel, my good friend Mark from Brownworks. And while the ammunition for this range report was provided by Jack, who also lent the gun to the channel, I always want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Brownworks. Brownworks is such an amazing grip company. Mark over there is an artist. He's a craftsman. He can make a wide variety of grips for a wide variety of firearms out of a wide variety of exotic woods and materials. He can put on custom logos, custom engravings. He can create grips out of laminate wood. You guys can see all of his best work right here. I'm showing you some of these awesome grips that he has made for other people. All of his grips are custom made to order. They are one off. None of them are off an assembly line. They're all unique. They're all one of a kind. And if you like fine guns that can take wood panel grips, Mark is the guy for you. So I'm going to put a link in the description below as well as a 10% off coupon for your first order. Go over there to his website, see what he has to offer. And I'm telling you, he spends way more time making amazing grips for his customers than he does updating his website. So just because a gun is not listed there or a service is not listed there, he can probably set you up with what you're looking for. So please make sure to contact Mark. His customer service is amazing. And when you do contact Mark, thank him for supporting the Texas Gun Vault and tell him Jason from the Texas Gun Vault sent you. All right, so let's talk about the things that I like and don't like about this pistol. And I've already alluded to one, and that is it's an M&P. It's a Smith & Wesson M&P. And if you've shot an M&P 9 or an M&P 45, this gun is going to feel very similar to those. It's not like you have to relearn the controls or have different ergonomics. One of the complaints with the FN 5.7 is that some of the controls are in different places, like the safety and the way that the slide has a polymer overmold to it. It doesn't feel the same as any other pistol you've ever shot, especially the ones from FN. You would think there would be some type of overlap, and that's not the case when it comes to this particular gun. It feels like an M&P. It's very familiar. It's very similar, and I like that. And I think it kind of brings the world of 5.7 into people that aren't necessarily used to it because they're going to go, wow, that's just an M&P. It looks like the other gun I already have. I'm going to go try it out. 
Another thing about this gun I really like, and you guys know I'm a complete geek when it comes to the operating mechanisms of firearms, is Smith & Wesson has something in this they call the Tempo Barrel System. And essentially we have a rotating barrel inside of a barrel shroud with a gas system. I know it sounds really complicated, but when you break it down, it's actually not that complicated or that many extra moving parts. And the reason they have to do this is the 5.7 is a very quick projectile. And of course, as the laws of physics state, with every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And to make sure the slide doesn't come back too fast and the gas pressures are low and safe, you have to give this slide in the barrel some time to unlock. So once the projectile leaves the barrel, some of the gases are trapped in the barrel that are pushed into the barrel shroud. That higher pressure prevents the slide from coming back. But when that pressure goes down or equalizes, then the slide will come back and then the barrel rotates and unlocks. It's really kind of interesting. So let me go ahead and show you what this looks like. Here is the barrel and as you can see as I pull the slide back you can see that barrel right there rotating. That is really interesting. Now some people say this is not a very accurate gun because of that because there's going to be a little bit of play in the barrel. However, this borrows something from an older gun that is very revered, the Steyr GB. This gas system that vents it into essentially a barrel shroud or the slide is borrowed from them. So this is nothing new. And so I think Smith & Wesson really refined it. So it's really interesting and really cool. Now on this barrel shroud, we also have a threaded portion for a suppressor. And this is something neither the Ruger or the FN offer as factory options. You can get stuff in the aftermarket, but Smith & Wesson has come out with this right from the factory. And for the most part, as long as you have a 22 caliber suppressor that usually is rated for full auto, you should be able to use the 5.7 through it. Now, make sure you always check your suppressor's manufacturer's recommendations. But I know some companies do offer suppressors that can be used on 5.7 that are initially designed for 22. But as I said, check the specifications of your suppressor. And it is one half by 28, which is the common 22 caliber suppressor thread pitch here in the US. So you do have some options there. That is really cool. Another thing that I think Smith & Wesson did to kind of beat Ruger and FN at their own game, which is of course a high capacity magazine. When this FN 5.7 came out, it was really lauded because it has a 20 round magazine. Well, Smith & Wesson did them a little bit better with a 22 round magazine. And that's not even a big magazine. It's pretty darn thin. I like these magazines better because they're made of metal where the FN ones are also made of polymer. So I think that's gonna be a little bit more durable in the long run. And finally, something that really sticks out and it's kind of going back to it being an M&P is I like the fact that this has a metal slide. It feels like a gun. One of my complaints with the FN 5.7 is with that polymer overmolded slide, it kind of feels like a toy. And I feel this is just more comfortable, it's more recognizable, it feels more substantial, and I really like that. Now the Ruger also has a metal slide as well, and that's something that I mentioned in the range report on that gun that I did like over the FN. So both those guns I think are better than the FN in that regard. All right, so now let's talk about a couple of things that I don't like. And the first thing is when you pick it up, you'll notice the dimensions of the frame are definitely a little bit different, even from that of the 5.7. Because this cartridge is so much longer, the grip has to be longer from the front strap to the back strap. However, it's not a very wide cartridge. And even though it's double stack or stagger stack, this grip is really, really thin. So it has a long grip from here to here, but it is very narrow. And of course, depending on your hands, you may not like that. Now you don't have to worry about the recoil being any worse because 5.7 is such a low recoiling cartridge. However, in my larger hands, the FN 5.7, which is definitely wider feels more ergonomic. So you pick this up and go, that is a weird feeling dimension to that grip. It's not odd or uncomfortable. It's just not what you're expecting. It kind of feels like a single stack nine millimeter, but it has a bigger distance from the front strap 
to the back strap. And I kind of feel like that grip could be just a little bit wider. It would make it more comfortable. Something else that I don't like about this gun, and I noticed it when some other gun reviewers announced it essentially because they're the big channels that can get all these guns immediately, was the slide to frame fit. And you'll notice on this one, it's actually pretty good, but you can actually see through the slide and the frame. Now that's actually even from front to back. I wanna say some of the other reviewers that I saw, it was not even. This doesn't bother me as much. I'm not a big fan of it because obviously I don't want dirt or particulate getting in there. I wish that was fit a little bit better, and that just seems to be part of the design. However, some of them looked really goofy, where the gap in the front was way bigger than the gap in the back. I feel like that is very unattractive. You have such an attractive gun everywhere else, that slide to frame fit just needed to be a little bit better. And finally, something I noticed at the range is loading the magazines. Now, Smith & Wesson does provide a mag loader with this, and it goes over and it doesn't work quite the same because it is a double stack, double feed magazine. You can load it just like an AR-15 magazine where you don't put the rounds in from the front, you put them in from the top and just pop them in. However, when you load this thing, once you get around nine to 10 rounds, it becomes quite difficult to load, and this thing can hold up to 22 rounds. So this spring, is pretty darn stout so you're probably going to need this and has a little hole in the back and so when you push down on it it actually doesn't push the follower down so you have to give yourself enough room you insert that cartridge and then push this down and it loads the magazine you're definitely going to need this and I don't like that design of the magazine now maybe it has to be that way for the dimensions of the cartridge I don't remember the Ruger being that hard to load but it's definitely a very difficult magazine to load all right, so I've talked enough about this gun and giving you guys a little bit of an overview, so let's get it to the range. As always, I'm gonna load up one of these magazines, set the target out at seven yards, just see if the gun functions, what the recoil's like, if I have any problems with the trigger, if the sights are easy to use, and just kind of get my initial impressions. Now, I also wanna say that I'm not gonna shoot this gun as much as I normally do in another range report because I didn't have as much ammunition. So I had to be very judicious in my ammunition ammunition use. So understand, I did not put this gun through its paces. So this is just more of a tabletop review and first impressions range report versus a typical range report where I put a few hundred rounds through a gun. All right, so seven yards, one magazine. Let's see how this thing shoots. All right, and I think those results speak for themselves. So far, the gun is reliable and really accurate. It is low recoiling. I wouldn't say it's the same as a 22. It's a little bit more than a 22. It's not snappy, and if you're recoil sensitive, you're gonna be able to shoot this gun with no problem whatsoever. And most importantly, so far, the gun is fun. And yes, I'm dropping the F word. I want my guns to be reliable, accurate, and most importantly, fun to shoot, because if they're fun to shoot you're going to take them to the range and you're going to train and practice with them all right so now i'm going to set up the target at a further distance i want to see what happens to this group i'm going to take a little bit more time between my shots i really want to stage this trigger see how the break is how the reset is and generally if i continue to get the same good accuracy so let's just see what happens
Alright, so it's still a pretty good group. It opened up a little bit, and as you can see, I'm shooting a little bit to the left. And that's where I think this grip is coming into play. I've already talked about the dimensions of it. And when it comes to my hand, it kind of wraps around this grip kind of weird, because it's so long this way and so narrow. And because of that, I don't think I'm really putting my finger directly on the trigger. And that's why I might be pulling it a little bit to the left. When it comes to staging the trigger, it's really nice. It's a very crisp break to the wall, a very nice audible and tactile reset. It's as good as all of those other MMP triggers, so I absolutely love that. All right, so now I wanna see if I can shoot this against a barrier or kind of bench rest it. I'm gonna set the target at 20 yards, put 10 rounds through it, and once again, see what happens to this group. Hopefully, this gun will continue to be accurate for me, but let's see how I do. And I'm definitely not as happy with that group as I was with the others. It's definitely opening up. It's still shooting to the left. And I was aware of that when I was shooting it. I still think it has to do with the grip. That's why I said earlier, I really would like a little bit fatter grip like you have on the FN57. It's still a relatively narrow grip as compared to most sidearms. So I don't think adding a little bit of width to this grip would be detrimental. They were definitely going for a smaller size and I get that, but this is exceptionally narrow. And I guess depending on the size of your hands, you might have issues like this. Or if you have really, really, really small hands, you might not be able to comfortably reach that trigger. So they need to do something with that, maybe offer a modular backstrap system. That would probably help a lot. I'm kind of surprised they did not incorporate that into this frame. Now, speaking of that grouping, maybe this is the inaccuracy that people are talking about, but it was performing great at closer ranges. I really took my time. I staged the trigger. I tried to control my breathing. I thought it would shoot better than that. It's still respectable. It's still practical, but it's not the tack driver that I was kind of hoping it to be. All right, so now the next thing I'm going to do is have my wife shoot this. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I personally made a mistake. We shot it and I forgot to push the record button on the camera. My bad. I thought it was recording, but my wife got to put a magazine through it. I'm actually going to ask her what she thinks about it so you can get it directly from her mouth and you'll see the results of how she shot it. So let me tell you what she thinks about it in her own words. All right, so I was a knucklehead and I did not push the record button, but you did shoot it, Becky. I did and shoot it. You did pretty good at seven yards. Unfortunately, I, I didn't get all that awesome footage. But uh, what did you think? Did, did you like it? I did like it. I didn't have any problems with it. Felt good, and I like that there's no recoil. Awesome. And as you can see, she likes it. And you guys know if we both like a gun, well, we're very different shooters. And hopefully I think that means a broad spectrum of people is going to like this. And I still feel bad not pushing the record button. It was totally my fault. There's just a lot of noise there at the range. I thought the camera went beep and it didn't. So I definitely owe her another chance to shoot this if I can get some more ammo and of course get that recorded for her Facebook and her Instagram. So what are my final thoughts when it comes to the Smith & Wesson M&P 5.7? Well, this might surprise you because I do like the original, the FN 5.7, because it is the OG of the 5.7 pistols. 
I actually think that when it comes down to the FN, the Ruger, and the Smith & Wesson, this might be my favorite to shoot. It feels the best when it comes to the controls, the metal slide. I think it's very attractive, especially if you like the stylings of the Smith & Wesson M&P. There is a version that does have a manual safety. And I know some people think you don't need a manual safety. I totally get it. But on a gun like this, I kind of would like one. There are definitely a few things about this gun that I would want to tweak. I definitely would like to have maybe, as I said, a modular grip system and the grip to be a little bit wider, but I'm very fascinated by the operating mechanism. The fact you do have a threaded barrel shroud or a barrel sleeve, it really has so much going for it. And I think it definitely beats it in many categories over the FN or the Ruger. And the price of this is really affordable, where I want to say the FN is definitely a few hundred dollars more than this, but I honestly think when it comes to the quality, both of them are on the same level. So I would definitely recommend this to someone that's looking to get into 5.7 and maybe not like the stylings or the price of the FN, and maybe might not like Ruger in general. I'm one of those people. I know a lot of people love Ruger. I'm just not a big Ruger fan. I always find something about them that, for me, makes them feel cheap. And this kind of bridges that gap. It's not an FN. It's chambered in 5.7. has a metal slide. has lots of options. It's not a perfect gun, so who knows? Maybe they'll come out with a 2.0 version of this. But it has so much going for it. So on my star system, how would I rate the Smith & Wesson M&P? 5.7 well this thing gets four and a half stars out of five i really like it it didn't exceed my expectations i wish it shot a little bit more accurately and i've already talked about the grip issue but i think in time maybe there'll be some aftermarket things that can be done to this but my gut tells me they're going to modify this over time but yeah, four and a half stars out of five. What a great gun. Thank you, Jack, for lending it to the channel and giving me a chance to shoot this. And I hope this gives some people some more information. If you're looking to get a gun in 5.7, you're looking at the FN, you're looking at the Ruger, you're looking at the Smith & Wesson, and now you have more data points. So a great offering from Smith & Wesson. I'm glad they're making it. And now... I kind of want one. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. And do you guys like shooting 5.7? Is it a caliber that really interests you? So, as always, thanks for watching.